Hey, Matthews. I'm sorry you're starting uh, without me, but we're jumping into trigonometry. So at the top of your notes, you can go math not extended. For one trig ratios and labeling, it's out of 13 AB in the text. Um, some of you may have seen uh, a little bit of trigonometry already, maybe not. I think the hardest part is labeling and figuring out which angle you're looking at and then which um, side, the side name is based on that. So that's what we're messing with today and uh, we're carrying on uh, despite my absence. Um, so as a little warm up, here is a business meeting and uh, these three are sitting here hanging out. If you're talking about Dwayne as your main individual, um, the person sitting opposite of Dwayne is Bettina, right? And the person sitting adjacent to, du to Dwayne is Alfred, right? And if that makes sense to you, then trigonometry should be easy, right? That's the hardest part, I think, just like looking at one angle and then, and then deciding who's opposite and adjacent. If we looked at it from Bettina's point of view, uh, Dwayne is opposite, from Bettina's point of view, and Alfred is adjacent. Now I know there's probably somebody here because their hands are there, but since we're talking about triangles, trigonometry, uh, we're just using those three for now. Trigonometry is really like how lengths and angles are related together. And it's one of the best source of memes uh, and math jokes. So this hopefully will make sense to you later. Uh, so here we go, let's try it out. In A, we're just interested in labeling uh, right angled triangles, yeah? We'll deal with non-right angle triangles later, but um, for now, uh, if this is the angle we're interested in, they use this little symbol, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, if that's the angle we're interested, this side is opposite, it's cross from, and this side is adjacent, it's next to, and the hypotenuse is always the longest one. You can tell the longest one is always across from the 90 degree angle. So, trying to keep all that straight, um, You'll do that one in a second, but let's try this one. If this is our angle that we're talking about, M is the opposite, and K is the adjacent. I know T is next to it too, but T is across from the 90 degree angle, so we reserve the fancy word hypotenuse for that. So hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. Here's our abbreviations for them, hype, op, and adj, right? Now, when you look at this, we don't say adj, you say the whole word adjacent. It doesn't take that long, right? Same thing, app. You don't just say app, right? You're saying opposite. Uh, we're going to do that same thing when we talk about ratios in a second. So you try this. Tell me who, who, give me the name of the side uh, that's the hypotenuse in here, the side that's opposite this angle, the side that's adjacent to that angle. Before you pause me, let me help you with one of them. The hypotenuse is pretty obvious. It's uh, it's across from the 90 degree angle. So this length is the hypotenuse. Now we could call it, give it some other name like, well, its name is P, little p. If this big P is this dot, then little p is across from it, right? Big P is the vertex, little p is the length. It has another name. You could call it X if you really wanted to, but uh, it, more formally, it's little, it's lowercase p, or it's qr with a line over top. The line over top means it's a line. You could also write it as rq with a line over top. It's like going from this point to this point, right? Either of those are fine. I have a compulsion to put them in an alphabetical order. So I like qr better. So for this first one, qr hat, qr hat is the name of the hypotenuse. Take that idea and try B and C and pause me. No, seriously, pause me. Okay, opposite to this angle is this side, which we'll call QP or PQ, doesn't matter. And adjacent is the one next to it. I know the hypotenuse is next to it also, but it's the hypotenuse that's a more important name, so we give it a special name. It's the longest. So this is P our hat. Great, moving on. If we're interested in some angle, there's a relationship between the sides. That's the whole like part about trig that we're interested in. Um, and we're interested in the relationship, that ratio. 
So I'm going to blow this uh, picture up a little bit. And we would do this in class. And you could do this in class if you have a ruler, um, if it's printed to scale. Here's my 30 degree angle. This side is the opposite. And this side is the adjacent. No, ah, ah, what's wrong with you, Gorkevich? Hypotenuse. Right? There's the 90 degree. It's got to be the hypotenuse. There's an interesting relationship if you if you take the opposite. Well, I'll show you. Let's take a look. If you look at this opposite, I'm going to try to make this kind of carefully. Here's this length of this opposite side. It's opposite this angle. Right? If we take that length, duplicate it. I'm going to change it to color. If we lay this down on the hypotenuse like this, you notice something kind of interesting. How much of the hypotenuse does that take up? Some. Kind of looks like half. Well, look at this. It's almost exactly half. In fact, it, 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 it's half, right? There's half, there's half. And so when we took this side, this opposite, and we divided by the hypotenuse, we said this divided by this. If this is 10, if this is 10, this is going to be 20, right? When we took this opposite and we divided by this hypotenuse in this littlest triangle, we got half. This is half as big as this. We got one half, or maybe 0 0.5. Let's call it 0 0.5 for a second. Interesting. We're going to keep this 30 degree triangle and do that same thing again. But instead, I want to look at this little bit bigger triangle. You could, this is in your notebook, um, or you can yeah, me measure any 30 degree triangle and play the same game. Um, yeah, so let's measure this opposite and this hypotenuse from here to here. And we'll look at that triangle. So I'm going to get rid of this. Let's do this. Double that. Let's turn this blue again. And then check this out. How much hypotenuse does this take up? Well, looks like you can't tell. Look at that. Half, right? So even when we did this again and we said the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, we got the same little weird decimal ratio, relationship. Half, 0.5, right? And take a guess what would happen if we did it again with an even bigger 30 degree triangle. Notice my angle hasn't changed. Right? I'm still using the bigger triangle. Let's do it with this big one. I'm going to do it a little bit faster now so you don't fall asleep. Duplicate. Ah, avert your eyes. Still turn to blue or else people will freak out. Ah, avert your eyes. There and there. Look at that. Look at that. Half. Okay, it's a little crooked. Leave me, <laughs> leave me know. Um, when you take this 30 degree triangle and you do, take the opposite side, figure out what it is, and we divide by the hypotenuse, you figure out this is half of this. Always. Right? You try this a million more times and you'll always get that this, this opposite side, the side opposite of the angle, is half as big as the hypotenuse interesting. In fact, in fact, I've already written all over this. <laughs> Sorry, avert your eyes. Um, there's a relationship, there's a name for these relationships, right? And when you take the opposite and you divide by the hypotenuse, you get a relationship called the sine. Sine, the whole thing. Not We write, the, the name is sine. We abbreviate it as S-I-N. But don't say S-I-N say sign or you sound dorky and, and not in a good way. Um, same thing, there's another relationship when, so here we just talked about the sign, the opposite and the hypotenuse. There's another relationship if we did this the same, same way. If we looked at the adjacent side, so this is the adjacent side, and we looked at this rate, this length, in comparison to the hypotenuse. 
Now this one doesn't have as nice of a number. It's not half. In fact, the, <laughs> when, if you measure this, the decimal is going to be like 0 0.866, right? It's about this length, this short side, is about 86% of the length of the hypotenuse. Yeah, why, why 86%? Just because that's how the geometry works. And see how like we're missing like a little tiny piece, like 15%. And if you did that same thing again, this versus its hypotenuse, the adjacent and its hypotenuse, you'd get something that's about 86% of the full length. Right? You're missing the same amount. This is about 15% that we're missing. Yeah, That relationship, adjacent and, and hypotenuse, is called the cosine. Cosine. Not, not cos. Cosine. Right? Whole thing. Cosine is what you get when you divide the adjacent and the hypotenuse. It's some relationship. It's 86% on a 30-degree triangle. It's different on different triangles, different angles, triangles. Um, and the tangent is what you get when you divide the opposite and the adjacent, shazam. So what we just saw was that the sine was about 0.5. The cosine ends up being like 0 0.86, 0 0.87. The tangent has its own decimal, it's close to 60%. It's always going to be the same for the same angles, for the same angle triangle. And then as you change the angle, as you change the uh, yeah, angle of the relationship between the sides changes, we'll play with that some more. We just want to label today. So let's try it with this. Just um, for reference, this little symbol is called theta or theta. It's a Greek letter T. We use it like X, but usually when we use it, we mean that our variable is an angle. It's kind of like a zero with a belt on. Theta. I like zero with a belt, right? Um, you can use X if you want, but often we use theta. So find sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. I'll do the first one for you. Um, sine theta just means find me the ratio, the relationship between sine, oh, what was that? Sine is, um, sine, oh, I forgot. Um, oh, opposite and hypotenuse. Sine is the relationship between those two. Sine, this is the angle. So this is the opposite based on that angle. So four. The hypotenuse is the big one. It's across from the 90, so 4 over 5. So our, you can leave it like that and call it 4 fifths, or you can call it 0 0.8. If you took this length and divided by this length, you'd always get 80%, 0 0.8. All right, you pause me and try cosine and tangent. Okay. So... We found that sine was opposite over hypotenuse, 4 over 5. Cosine is going to be the adjacent. The adjacent to this angle is the next two, is next to it, so 3. And hypotenuse is that one, so 3 fifths. And then tangent is the opposite, 4, over the adjacent, which is 3, 4 thirds. Cool. You can give them as leave them as decimals, but that's fine as it is. That's the ball game. You're looking at 13A and B in your fancy new packets. Your fancy new packets look like this, and they uh, should be in, at the, on the front desk or in the back. Um, so you're going to work on 13A, and you're just naming them uh, based on the angle. And 13B, you're giving the ratios. Right? So sine theta, here's our theta, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, three-fifths. Right? That should be pretty straightforward. Try some of the harder ones on your own, like this, right? and then also like this. Here's a little fussy bit, though. Um, cosine squared of, of a number is really cosine of that number times itself. Uh, it's so you don't get confused about is the 16 squared if you put the squared out, out here. So it's a shorthand version for that. Try that one too. They're, those are interesting. They're, they become uh, identities. Here's some solutions. You're welcome to go on if you'd like um, and uh, or, or watch the next video. Hope you're doing well and I'll catch you later.